Democratic leader Chuck Schumer plans a vote this week on legislation to suspend the debt ceiling, but Republicans have vowed to block it. That raises questions about whether Congress can actually avert a federal default later this month. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell says Democrats can do it on their own by using the reconciliation process, which would require a simple majority vote in the 50-50 Senate. President Biden called the Republican strategy, quote, reckless, and says it could send the U.S. economy over a cliff. So joining us now to discuss is Lester Munson. He is a principal at the government relations firm BGR Group and also Bloomberg Government's Emily Wilkins, who is in D.C. for us. So Lester, let's just walk through the Republican strategy here. What do you think about what it is that we're seeing uh, from the GOP at this point in time? Well, Mitch McConnell is perhaps the smartest and toughest negotiator in Washington, has been for quite some time. Uh, his uh, peer competitor might be Nancy Pelosi, although she stumbled last week. But Mitch McConnell signaled three months ago that Republicans would not help Democrats with the debt limit extension. Uh, he has held true to that for the last uh, 12 weeks. His conference is with him. They have been very clear. The Democrats are attempting <clears throat> to challenge that assertion and challenge Republican Party unity. I suspect it is not going to work. Uh, and that at the end of the day, the Democrats will be compelled to follow the path Senator McConnell has laid out for them, which is using the reconciliation mechanism, which Democrats could have started a couple of months ago uh, at the end of the day to extend the debt limit before the end of next week. But Lester, do you think that uh, Democrats or Republicans will then get the blame if the U.S. actually ends up defaulting? Because uh, in the past with uh, former President Trump, we, we did see sort of roles reversed here. Um, and so Democrats are hoping that Republicans then, uh, you know, get some of the blame if this ends up happening. I suspect at the end of the day, uh, voters will see the party in charge as those responsible for what happens in Washington. Democrats control the White House. They control the Senate. They control the House. They could extend the debt limit on their own. They could have done it a couple of months ago. This uh, mildly interesting parliamentary maneuver by Senator McConnell and the Republicans may irritate some, but I suspect most voters will see that the Democrats are in charge and hold them responsible for the things that happen in Washington. Emily, what are you hearing? You're in Washington. What are you hearing from your sources about sort of the movement and really sort of the political back and forth that we're, we're seeing? I mean, this is sort of a classic politics in a way. You have Democrats and Republicans in a standoff. And what you're seeing happen right now is that both parties are trying to get the other one blamed for getting so close to a potential default. Um, but I think Lester really just nailed it, the fact that Democrats do control the House, the Senate, and the White House, and therefore they're the ones that potentially stand the most to lose if some sort of default occurs under their watch. I mean, though the Democrats right now, they're sticking with their strategy of trying to pressure Republicans to go along with them. I mean, to see President Joe Biden come out yesterday to say that a meteor was heading towards the economy should the debt limit hit and something not be done, and then to lay it all the, at the feet of Mitch McConnell, saying that McConnell was the one who was going to decide whether or not this would happen. Democrats are really ramping up the pressure here. The interesting thing, though, is that we've already seen cases where the pressure has been on Mitch McConnell to do certain things. Remember, I think it was back in 2016 with the whole Supreme Court debate filling the seat uh, of, of uh, justice um, of the justice who passed away, that McConnell was on great pressure to make sure that he filled that seat, and he didn't. And so we've already seen McConnell weather really strong pressure campaigns before, and there's really no sign at this point that he's going to change his course. And what then would would happen if we do see what President Biden calls a, a meteor to the economy? I mean, if the U.S. ends up defaulting, Emily, I mean, what is it that will happen a, as a result? So Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has laid this out a number of times for Congress, saying that there is a potential recession that could come, saying that various individuals who get services from the government could be impacted. I mean, there's a lot of debate about exactly what would happen. Uh, but even if the U.S. doesn't wind up defaulting but just gets close, remember, we've previously had our credit rating downgraded. So this isn't something that's good for the U.S. economy to be getting this close to that October 18th deadline and not have a viable path forward in place.